Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And the second topic is a mystery. I'll give you the clue now. Eastbound and down, 18 wheels are rolling. We going to do what they say can't be done. We got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm eastbound. Watch old bandit run. You know it? Smokey and the Bandit. We're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons and Smokey and the Bandit and how you can tell if one of the players at your table is asking you for your help in your Dungeons and Dragons game. All right. Hey, I'm Scott Garibay. <laughs> and I say that Dungeons and Dragons was never a game. In my humble opinion, Gary Gygax delivered as a fully formed, powerful, secular human improvement engine and that the purpose of Dungeons and Dragons is specifically for you, the Dungeon Master, to improve yourself, to transform your life and change the culture you live in and specifically, practically benefit and improve every player at your table as a human being. All right? That's a powerful statement. I, 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 every single word of that is my humble opinion. I don't think I don't think Dungeons and Dragons was game on day one. I don't think it's a game on day now. I think it's the most powerful secular tool for improving humans that's ever been created. Okay? Now, if you're here and you've been here a little while, right, you know this, right? But not everybody sold. In fact, I don't think anybody sold yet, right? Like, I've never, never once have I ever heard somebody say, Scott, you're right. And without equivocation. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, Scott, uh, part of what you're saying is right, but I still think you're wrong, right? With and Here's some equivocation that I give. Uh, uh, Scott, I think you're right. Here's an equivocation, which really says you're wrong, okay? So I'm hoping for that day, you know, when I'm going to convince somebody of this. But if you're here, you are interested in what I'm saying. Really, <laughs> you find something engaging, right? And the issue is you may actually have a player at your table who is asking you for the exact help that I am telling you you're capable of giving, right? That you can improve them as a person. You can solve problems with them practically by dungeon mastering correctly, in my humble opinion, okay? Now, this, is, this gets interesting, right? Where would we find a situation where a player was asking for you to step up, stop sad sacking, right, and be an actual real dungeon master in the in the way that Ben from Questing Beast talked about last year, saying uh, he 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 set it down, man. He said it very clearly. He said, "Guess what? Uh, a Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition dungeon master today is expected to know the rules backwards and forwards, be an epic storyteller, and be a life coach." Do you have a player who's asking you to life coach them at the table? All right. In order to recognize this, you need to watch Smokey and the Bandit. Actually, you don't have to watch Smokey and the Bandit. I'm going to break it down for you right here. I'm going to explain to you how this happens. All right. So first of all, this type of help that we can provide, in my humble opinion, as Dungeon Masters, how would somebody ask for it? Right. Well, first of all, it's unlikely that anybody would ask for it, but they are expecting it, right? And that's the that's the issue. Like, look at look at like romantic relationships today. Ain't nobody talking. Nobody's having open conversations, right? It's all complicated, right? One of my best one of the best lines I heard in any rap song ever was, "They got me on a leash because they, cause they said no strings," right? So many people today, right? Oh, we're not. There's this is there's no labels on this, right? And and they're literally leashed up, right? Like they're like. I think literally and figuratively in some cases, right? Like incredibly complicated stuff happens because people don't aren't able to ask for what they really want, right? Well, this is perfectly, beautifully demonstrated in um, Smokey and the Bandit. All right, let's, let's talk about Smokey and the Bandit, all right? You got Bandit, right? Now, he, he runs Blocker for 400 cases, of course, right? Uh, and they're going to they're gonna, uh, take it across straight, state lines. And at the time this movie was made, which I think is like 40 or 50 years old now, classic film. Five out of five stars, man. I love this movie, right? So basically, um, you know, you have this situation, right? Uh, where he runs Blocker, and he runs Blocker for Snowman, okay? And Snowman is the semi-driver, right? Snowman has a basset hound named Fred, right? Now, uh, Bandit, who drives a... Uh, very dope trans, um, black trans Am with a gold eagle on the front, right? And the whole movie is just watching that thing slide around through grass and asphalt. It's a beautiful film. Like, it's just such a beautiful film. Um, so, basically, you have this situation where 
where um, Bandit runs Blocker for Snowman, and Snowman runs the you know drives the the eighteen wheeler, and he never gets picked up by cops because Bandit is out showboating and like literally speeding and catching ta- you know catching cops on a tail and then diverting them away from um, from Snowman's run right. So there's a really interesting scene in the there's actually multiple scenes right. So Bandit goes back and he and he says, you know, hey, this is Bandit Snowman. What you got? How are you? And he says, how are you doing? Right? And you know what? You know what? Snowman, whose real name is Cletus, right? You know what Cletus says? He says, I'm doing fine. But Fred, now Fred is his basset hound who's sitting next to him in the semi. He says, Fred is looking lean, man. His skin's just fa- just falling off. And that's kind of funny because he's a basset hound and his skin is always kind of falling off, right? But he says he's like he's looking a wool wan. He needs a cheeseburger, right? Now, Fred don't need no cheeseburger. <laughs> like, Cletus, Snowman needs a cheeseburger, right? But these, but Bandit and Snowman are men's men, right? Like, this is back in the day where being a man was still allowed, and there were people who appreciated men being men, right? Like, you were like, oh, hey, could you be a husband or a father or something useful? Rather than say, hey, sad sack, get back where you are, shut your mouth, never say anything because you're toxic, you cannot serve as a husband, you cannot serve as a father, you are a useless piece of whatever, and no longer function as a human being, right? Which is most of what is men here today, right? Now, I'm incredibly, uh, I'm incredibly blessed I got godfathered in, there's somebody who still values me as a husband and a father, Amen. We're like, you know, but but today ain't none of that happening, right? Like, and if it is, it's definitely an exception. It certainly isn't the macro, right? So these guys can't like. So Cletus literally can't be like, hey, could you feed me, right? Could you help me? Can you aid me? Can you be a practical? Can you practically? Can, can you be a servant to me, right? They can't say that, right? Like because they're men's men, right? Like, and these are like these are the guys who are strong, silent type, you know, like. Um, although they talk on the CB a lot, right? <laughs> and and so you know that this is true that this is that it's that Fred does not need the burger because when Bandit stops, he says, "Give me two cheeseburgers, not one." That was requested by Snowman for Fred the Basset Hound. Two, two, one for Snowman, one for uh for for Fred the Basset Hound. Right? Later, um, Bandit sa- Bandit says, "Hey." How is your um? How are your how are your windpipes doing, right? And and he's saying this because Cletus Snowman is constantly on the CB um, checking out the route, seeing if there's a faster way, seeing if there's blocks, right? Because they didn't have GPS right then, right? And so he's constantly talking on the CB as he's driving, and he is tired, right? And so Bandit is saying, "Hey, do you need a drink, right? Do you need just some cool sweet tea, right?" And they stop, and they get him, and he gets some, and and he's and Cletus says. I'm doing, he says, I'm doing fine, but Fred's windpipe, he says, Fred is all parched because he's been barking at everything, right? And the thing is, Snowman can't, he can't say what he needs from Bandit. It's just the two of them, because they have these heteronormative, like, you know, uh, like constrictions, right? Restrictions on their speech. They can't just have an open conversation, right? But... Bandit understands that any request that is made for Fred is actually a request that is made for Snowman himself. Do you have a Cletus at your table? Are you Bandit, right? Do you have a person who is asking for something session after session after session for their player character that they actually need in real life? And I think with the size of my audience... And the people that are here, like you have to be deep in the weeds on Dungeons and Dragons to listen to even two of my videos, right? Right. And and the reality is, you know, a lot of people come here, they listen and they're like, oh, I don't understand half of that. I better run over to Dungeon Dudes where I'll understand everything. Right? And, you know, and so and they do. They just and, and that's okay, right? You know, like they they're not here to cut their deficiencies in half with Dungeons and Dragons. They're they're with Dungeons and Dragons to cut another goblin in half, right? And the Dungeon Dudes will help them with that, right? And you know, and so, basically, you hit this situation where you very well may have a Cletus in your group. And I want to ask you to start watching, right? Watch the requests that come in for your player characters, and I want you to think, is this a Fred Basset Hound request, right? It's being asked for for Fred the Basset Hound, but it's really for Cletus Snowman, right? And Bandit 
actually f- facilitates it and helps Cletus Snowman and cares for him and serves him as a servant, right? Um, but there's never, but there's never a direct request. Do you have a player right now who is asking for something session after session after session for their player character that they actually need? for them themselves, right? And that Ben from Questing Beast was 100% right. That you as a dungeon, when he said last fall that you as a 5th edition dungeon master are actually expected to know the rules backwards and forwards, be an echo story, and be a life coach. And that practical aid, you serving your players and crafting solutions for them within the narrative, right? You need to you need to get that second cheeseburger. You need to get that sweet tea, right? And deliver it to your player and give them something uh, that is emotional, intellectual, maybe even spiritual that they need and deliver it through Dungeons and Dragons. I think, I definitely think I've had a Cletus or two at my table and I believe I got that second cheeseburger, right? And I think you have one too. I think you have a Cletus, right? And you need to start to open your, your eyes, your heart, and your mind and your soul to receive what's needed from your players, right? Because it might be more than a longsword, like a, a virtual longsword. It might be something really fundamental that they need personally, right? And they need a fix that can be delivered through Dungeons & Dragons. Every single word of that is my humble opinion. What's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion when you get in the comments and send your traffic. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.